to create some really nice beauty work isolated with mocha masks now found inside your sapphire toolkit. Sapphire and mocha, two great tastes that taste great together like chocolate and peanut butter. I'm going to show you how to create an effect that looks like this. We're going to use S Beauty, S Blur, and S Glint. To get started, I will select my layer and then in my effects library I will navigate to Sapphire, Blur, and Sharpen Tools and then I will select S Beauty and apply it to my clip. Inside of my effects panel in S Beauty I will use the Edit in Mocha button to launch Mocha. Now the reason I actually need to use Mocha for this shot is because this is a blonde lady with pale skin so if I do a key on her face I'm gonna key her hair. What I want to do instead is track her face and her body to isolate the effect. Now I will select my x plane and I will draw a shape around her face. I draw a shape around her face because Mocha is a planar tracker. So what does that mean? Planar tracking means we track a pattern of pixels as they move relative to one another through the scene. And that's a mouthful. All you really need to know is that we track a texture that moves in one direction. You want to think of objects in terms of low poly models. We get away with tracking her face as one plane because she's mostly facing us and most of the pixels move similarly. For more complex roto or precise tracks, you may want to track one plane at a time. For garbage mats to isolate beauty, this is fine. I'm going to use my add to x plane tool to cut her eyes out of my shape. And I'm going to use the add x plane tool to cut the bottom of her nose out as well and her mouth. Now why am I doing that? I'm doing that because I want to hold it out of the mat of the shape. I'm going to call this face roto. And you notice I used x splines for this. Now why did I use x splines? Here's why. Because I can just relax for a curve and if I select all of these points I can relax and make these curved automatically. That's instead of having to worry about beziers where I have to worry about two handlebars. I'm also going to draw a shape around her skin here. I'm going to call this neck and chest. I'm going to take neck and chest and I'm going to drag it under face roto. That's because while we're tracking this we don't want to hold this shape out of this shape. Mocha treats everything at the top of the layer pile as closest to the camera and everything further from the camera needs to go at the bottom of the layer pile. This is because Mocha will automatically hold out all of your foreground shapes from your background shapes as long as you as the user define what those foreground and background shapes are. Because this is rotoscoping we're not going to track perspective but here are the parameters that we track. Translation is pretty obvious, alright. Scale is really obvious, alright. And then rotation is also obvious. But shear and perspective mess people up. So here's shear versus perspective. Shear is just a shift in X and Y, while perspective is the addition of Z space to that movement. If your object is not moving in shear or perspective, then you want to leave those off. But her face is moving in shear and perspective. However, because this is rotoscoping, I'm going to leave perspective off. If I were doing a track, I would leave perspective on. By default, our input channel is left at luminance. I'm going to just track this while I talk. In layer controls, think of these gears as your action item in Mocha. When these gears are on, it means these layers are being tracked. Because both of these gears are going to be on for both these layers as I track, it will track both her face and her neck patch that I'm tracking as well. So what are we tracking? The input channel. Luminance means our R, G, and B channels. Auto tracking means we look at R, G, or B and Mocha decides. By default you want to leave it on luminance. Minimum percent of pixels used means we're tracking 30% of the pixels inside of this shape. And we can crank this value up if our object is slipping, but I actually think our track is hanging on really nicely. What we, all we need to adjust though is the edges of the shape because you can see it's tracking her face really well we're just going to have to adjust the roto. Smoothing level applies an all over blur to your image and if you don't have a crazy amount of grain just go ahead and leave it off. I've actually never had to use it and I've been using Mocha for eight years. We have three different motion settings, large motion, small motion, and manual track. And What do they mean? 
Large motion is your basic movement you're ever going to have to track. People walking, balls bouncing, birds flying, etc. Small motion is what we call sub-pixel motion. So for instance, your camera's on a tripod and the wind is blowing past, creating little half-pixel variations in your image. And manual track is exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to manually move the track by hand. So by default, the surface is a child of the track and the shape is the child of the track. The track is actually a nebulous piece of math that exists inside Mocha's brain. And the shape follows what it's doing, not the other way around. The shape is where the track is looking but it also follows the track. And I know that gets confusing, but if you can grasp that concept, you're going to track in Mocha extremely well. When I say the surface tool, what do I mean? The surface tool is what translates the track into a language that we can understand. So it goes from nebulous math data inside Mocha's brain out to an output that we can understand. The surface tool is either a corner pin or a transform. The transform is the cross hair in the middle of the surface tool and the corner pin are all four corners of your surface tool. You can move the surface tool to any location and it will still follow the track. It will not change what the track is doing. The exception is inside of manual track where when you use manual track you can adjust the surface tool and it will adjust what the track is doing. You use this to get past occlusions and we will cover that in another demo. If you increase your angle inside of Mocha, what this will do is this will widen the search area we look when an object is rotating. And zoom is the same thing, it increases your search area. Obviously you're going to take a processing hit when that happens. But it's better to take the processing hit and then let Mocha do the work for you than have to hand correct everything over time, it's just faster. So you can see I'm letting Mocha do the bulk of the animation for me. Once this track is complete, I'm going to adjust the mask on her face so that it looks less like she's wearing somebody else's skin and more like she's wearing a kabuki mask. You can see I have one keyframe, all right, at the beginning. But what I need to do is I need to find, I need to find the arcs of the animations. So here is a good place to correct this roto shape. Let's pull this to the side of her face and follow it along her jaw and then adjust this to the side of her face. So now Mocha will tween between that correction I just made. And if I feel like I need to adjust it again, I can adjust it just like this. So again, we look for the arcs of the animation, so I feel like this is the most changed. What I mean by the arcs of the animation is if you are animating a bouncing ball, you want to animate on the squash and the stretch, and then let Mocha do the tweening for you. It's a lot easier to rotoscope with a Wacom tablet than it is a mouse. However, roto with whatever tools make you comfortable. Rotoscoping with a mouse is a little bit like rotoscoping with a brick, but use the tools you have available to you. All right, so that's the area we're going to apply our Beauty Studio to. And then I'm going to adjust the shape on her body as well. So really, really quickly, I have done some quick and dirty roto. If we use the hand tool, we can reposition our frame. If we use the zoom tool, we can zoom in and out as needed. So I'm going to turn my mats off. I'm going to adjust my surface tool, and I'm going to show you what I mean by saying the surface tool follows the track. So here's our surface tool, and you can see it's glued to her forehead. That's what the track is doing, and you can see that even though we've animated the shape, the shape is separate from the track. So here's our tracking data, and here's our mask that we're using. What Mocha does is Mocha looks at the texture inside of this mask over time and how that texture is changing, and that texture change is how we get our track right here. The track jumps ahead and then pulls the shape and the surface tool to it, not the other way around. We don't actually have to have a track to do roto inside of Mocha, but it makes our life a lot easier, and that's how we cut our keyframes down. In Mocha, you cut your keyframes down to about a third of what you'd normally use, cutting your roto time in half. We're going to save this and we're going to close it. And now I need to apply my beauty effect to the skin. I select my skin color in the S Beauty effect and adjust my range softness and blur amount to my preferences. Then I will feather my Mocha mask in the Mocha dropdown under Blur Mocha to soften my Mocha mask edges. 
If we check the Show Mocha Only box, we can see how the effect is being isolated within our Mocha Mask. So here's our before, and here's our after. You can see that only her skin is affected and not her hair or any other parts of the shot. However, let's say I don't like the lines by her mouth or under her eyes and want to apply a more serious blur over the top of my S Beauty effect. I can select S Blur from my Sapphire Blur and Sharpen Toolkit and apply that to my same clip. In the Effect panel, I check the Edit in Mocha button. And now I can track the sides of her mouth using my X-Spline and Add to X-Spline tools. And let's track under her eyes with the same technique because these are both on the same plane. Let's select our Picker tool and relax our X-Spline so that we get a nice curved area. Let's call this Mouth Lines and let's call this Under Eye. And if these thumbnails ever, ever bother you when you are adjusting your shapes, you can turn them off here. Let's track both of these through the shot. I'm going to use my Activate Quick Stabilize mode so that I keep these in the center of my screen the whole time. This is a really nice way to rotoscope because it'll lock your shapes into one place so you can see where they're changing over time. And it'll allow you to adjust your masks. So I can actually adjust my masks on the fly while I'm tracking, just like this, and keep tracking. And Mocha's Planar Tracker, which is essentially a texture tracker, is so sensitive that it even captures the nice wiggle that happens when she closes her eyes. Now again, we're going to move this shape in on the fly and keep tracking. Alright, so I can quickly adjust my roto. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with it. We're going to save it. Now I've applied my blur to just these eye and mouth locations. And in my Mocha drop-down menu, I will select Blur Mocha and soften the matte edges. Now we have completely removed the unwanted lines from her face. I can even add some lighting effects, so I'll go into my Effects and select S Glint from my Sapphire Lighting Toolkit. I don't want to apply my glint to the background, but I do want to apply my glint to the screen my model is leaning against. So I will go into my effects panel and select Edit in Mocha. I create a quick and dirty roto mask in Mocha right on the right side of this panel, and then hit Save and Close. So there's no need to track this shape. And now I've isolated glint to the right side of my screen. And notice how there's no hard line to this glint effect, because glint is generating the lighting effect past the matte line, only using the lighting data from the mocha masked area. So here's my before, and here's my after. So as you can see, mocha inside of Sapphire really increases your toolbox to create powerful visual effects extremely quickly. We want to help you make cool work, and we want to get you home on time. If you have any questions, I am Mary Poplin, and you can find out more on www.borisfx.com.